you're live. Good evening, YouTube. I hope you're all well out there. Um, it has been on my mind really for some time to come onto YouTube and to give it a bit of love because it's been sorely ne neglected. Uh, and of course, having time home alone uh, to pay attention to these different formats uh, is a nice thing to do. So I um, thought it would be a good opportunity to jump on and to um, do a live and see what happens, basically. So I can see we've got two viewers. That's great. Uh, hello, Suvi, Savi Suvi. I hope my pronunciation is right. You see, uh, I have a confession to make. Uh, I've given Facebook so much love uh, over the years and uh, have always been a little bit intimidated with YouTube, the amount of settings and the, the feelings on my part to maintain high levels of uh, production quality have, have kept me away. <clears throat> and that, I think, in part is due to uh, under normal circumstances, my workload, uh, because of course I'm out on the road, driving here, there, and everywhere, um, addressing dog behaviour issues or assessing dogs, uh, and and then coming home, um, spending a couple of hours in the office, either writing reports and then doing emails as well. So it's a case of really striking that balance for me uh, in the last few years, actually, because uh, the actual work always comes first. And, uh, you know, I think it's been looking back over even, say, the last five, ten plus years, I, I like to think I've generally got that balance. It's not been too bad in the sense that, um, you know, I've been sharing what I can on social media as and when I can uh, uh, and then balancing that off with actually doing the work um, because you need both to create a complete cycle you know need to do the uh, self-promotion and the bits of uh, tweeting and instagramming and facebooking and the odd video on YouTube um, uh just seen your uh question suvi so i'll answer that in a moment thank you uh but yeah i was waffling wasn't i about that balance between promotion and doing the work and of course getting the two right because you can't just do promotion 100 percent of the time that would be crazy and uh you know, when I'm out doing the job as well, occasionally I need to stop and look after what you might call the back end of things. So it's uh, that promotional element, I guess. Um, yeah, so interesting, interesting. But the, yeah, the point I was going to make there is, of course, we're all forced now into this situation where... Um, um, let me just move this music which is playing very quietly in the background because uh, what is the best one bit of advice you would give us well actually this uh, some a uh, play you'll find it on a playlist called the puppy training journey and you'll see uh 14 videos first walks first vit trips to the vet um so i put those together a while ago they're a bit vloggy. They're, you know, they're off the cuff in their sort of style. Uh, so as I say, don't expect anything too polished there. But they were good and they were good fun to make. And actually looking back, um, you know, it's been really sweet looking back on those videos over the last couple of days because, um, you know, seeing your own puppy is, is always nice. And she's now about 18 months and um, bit making that little comparison between the beginning where, you know, there's all that sort of feeling of promise and a little bit of pressure for me to get it right um, because people are watching, which is fine. Um, so, yeah, that playlist, I think, is the best bit of advice I can give you because in there, there are a few, there is a few hours worth of, uh, covering all the basics that you'll go through. If I didn't have that playlist available for you, I would say that 
you must focus on socialization more than anything else with your puppy. I realize that that immediately brings us into um, the subject of the, the, the fact that that's not easy at the moment. Um, coincidentally, I've got some notes right here about socialization during the coronavirus uh, lockdown. And what I'll do maybe is, um, whilst I have your attention, I will give you the the main points on that and I've yet to make a video or would like to make a video on that in the coming days uh, but socialization the top and bottom of it as a subject is putting corona of virus aside for a moment is that when we acquire a puppy usually at the age of eight weeks um you then have from eight to depending on what book you read 14 to 16 weeks to socialize your pup um, and socialization is covered in the video I was just describing but I can I mean with Ruby when we had her uh, it was two Christmases ago um, we took her out every day from the day we got her in public uh, and it, when she was very, very small, I mean, she was, you know, only about that big, uh, we we had a sling and she was in the sling and she was meeting dogs that way and people and looking and hearing and smelling and taking on, on a sensory level, all of that. And I'm pretty confident that our efforts, um, although I consider them to be quite basic and simple, um, rudimentary it's nothing knowledge but those efforts have made ruby into a very sweet robust uh well-balanced young dog and so if you be, because we placed a lot of emphasis on socialization um but you know you can't just throw a dog into it it needs to be thought through you need to be you need to exercise some care over your dog young dog especially so that it's not getting itself into uh, too much trouble being told off let's say by older dogs uh, that are finding your puppy way too much so those are the sorts of things um, that can happen so yeah so I think socialization is absolutely your priority Suvi um, and alongside that we, you know, the, li the list is pretty long, really. But, you you know, you want, to, I would suggest to have a sweet, calm, well, well, we'll put calm aside for puppies. But you want um, a, a dog looking ahead to be well mannered and polite and, and calm again later. So, yeah, these are all sorts of qualities that I would encourage you to think about n now. And when the question is then, well, when do we start um, implementing the training for our young dogs to become that way? Well, the actual simple answer is basically from the day you pick them up. <laughs> OK, and so that mindset, um, that doesn't mean... <clears throat> to say that we put them straight into a, some sort of military training program, not the slightest. And I hope you'll get that vibe through my puppy training journey videos. Uh, but, you know, it is a mindset uh, it, in your mind and in your heart as well, because that then influences all the all of your actions and all of the ways in which you address your dog's behavior and training as you as you progress. Uh, so come on, I've got six viewers. Uh, ask me something, guys, because otherwise I'm going to ju just talk myself into the ground. Um, but um, nice to see you here anyway. And it's encouraging that I didn't have zero. Uh, if I had zero for 10 minutes, uh, that would have been a bit awkward. But um, it's nice to see I've got I can just jump on and a few of you will come and watch and listen. So that's lovely. I, I'm, I'd like to do more of this. Um, yeah, Suvi, thanks. Did watch your video. You mentioned. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Lovely. A lot of people, by the way. And I 
I realize this is a slightly delicate subject, but some people were seeing that I was clearly placing Puppy on the forest ground when she was eight, nine weeks of age onwards. And <clears throat> strictly speaking, this does contradict uh, the veterinary recommendations, although we can do what we like with our own dogs that should be recognized you know we're not we're not being dictated to but it does somewhat contradict the best practice that a vet would give you which is off the top of my head you know not to take your dog out until 10 or 12 weeks um if you got your dog at uh, eight weeks and uh, because as i said earlier the best thing you can do for your dog is to socialize him or her then well you're not going to be doing much socialization with your puppy if it's in waiting for its inoculations to do their magical trick and then to allow your your dog to be placed down now having said all of this uh, I do not place young dogs down on the ground where, for example, where lots of car, cars park and people let their dogs out and inevitably, and it shouldn't be the case, of course, but inevitably these areas tend to be heavily contaminated with dog poo, basically. And, uh, well, dogs will urinate in these areas as well because it's, you know, the first thing they all do. So these uh, dog walking car parks basically can become very very hot spots for um the, the risk for cross contamination um so what you'll see me doing with ruby in those early videos is putting her down pretty much in the middle of nowhere on small patches of grass in the forest um whilst she was watching my other two dogs yomp uh yomp about and i consider that the, the benefits of that to far outweigh any risks. Do remember that the socialization period is just that. It is a period that, 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 that really has already started when your puppy is with the breeder. And this, this is why, just as to throw the net a bit further, um, this is why it's really important to find a breeder that is uh, breeding in the home not in a shed at the bottom of the garden uh, in principle there's nothing wrong with that because you could have a really excellent shed at the bottom of the garden but by by definition the dog washing machine and so on and so forth so this is why homebred dogs are really important but the point i was making there is the um the age so a pup is already being socialized and trained if you like with the breeder so finding a good breeder is important but remember that the, the ultimate point i was working up to here is that uh un unless you, well sorry to remember that socialization period is closing off about 14 16 weeks it does continue of course it does after there but the it's actually a process that goes on in the dog's brain and it's called myelination so it's just the forming of the brain the the development of the brain and that development tends to slow down rapidly um i believe after that 14 16 weeks so the more things that um without overstressing it and I, uh, without overdoing it but the more things we can expose our dogs to uh, safely in a controlled way led by you uh where you're being thoughtful and proactive about how you're uh, going about that the better it can make a really big impact on your uh young and adult dogs behavior later on OK, so that was a um, probably took you 15 seconds, 10 seconds to type that. And I gave you an answer lasting at least 10 minutes. So <laughs> that's a pretty wild ratio. So, um, yeah. And unless there's anything else, um, I will call off, I think. But uh, yeah, so check out. Otherwise, I'll just give you a moment. But otherwise, to say on my YouTube channel here, Please have a look at uh, the the most recent videos. You're welcome, Suvi. 
Yeah, have a look at the most recent videos. I was just going through some paperwork here and uh, checking that I've sort of done everything with each title correctly. Um, <clears throat> but the two big ones were Walking Your Dog During Coronavirus Lockdown, which is obviously some people are having concerns about. I'm keen that people continue to go out with their dogs. But, yeah, I really think that some I, – I put a little poll up, actually, on the community part of my – youtube channel earlier and it was asking whether people are going out more less or the same as before the lockdown conditions with their dogs so i'd be interested in a bit of feedback for that um but uh yeah so another big one that dropped yesterday called uh dogs and children at home and staying safe you know, in my work as a, an expert witness i do go to families homes and see the uh, sort of post event, but the evidence of children having been bitten or photographs, and then I'm asked to look at the dog, and very often the dogs are really nice, and there's nothing really to nothing of great deal to report on a behavioral level. But these things do happen, it's largely because children will do sometimes inappropriate things with dogs, such as hugging them, sitting on them, tripping up over them trying to kiss them, you know, all of which I know happens. But uh, these are things that we don't, we want to be avoiding, especially what, during the lockdown, because we have dogs, children, adults compressed together um, all at the same time for extended periods. And so I'm a little concerned that, you know, we don't have any uh, accidents. And I feel that most of these accidents can be avoided. I you know i folded it up i'm going to bring it because it was due to go in the bin but the the points here were that um i developed a little acronym um called rise so r and this is some thinking around the basics around um uh, interactions between dogs and children but of course primarily a lot of this is about being parent-led uh, because as a parent you will be responsible if you are a parent you'll be responsible for implementing the RISE acronym so R stands for respect you know we need to be teaching children to respect our dogs I stands for involve so we need to uh, involve well, adults, sorry, need to be involving children with a lot of the basics. So things like feeding, a bit of training, walking, uh, all of, you know, keep, get your children involved because this helps improve the way your dog sees your child. So much less likely to uh, hurt it as a result. And of course, it teaches your child to be responsible and many many positive things there supervision probably the biggest one you know where is your dog where's your child what are they doing together and it's as simple as that with and, and a lot of these uh, dog to ch child incidents occurred when they occur rather when they're not being supervised and then finally education uh, so we're giving our child ongoing input to ensure that uh, you know Im appropriate interactions are taking place and this also encourages a a parents to go into a bit more detail uh, on canine body language um, one study I came across on the web just yesterday morning was showing some uh, quite shocking statistics of children uh, not recognizing basic canine body language and as a result were getting bitten and a much bigger percentage of those children being bitten were boys be simply because they uh, hugely overestimated their ability to read and control the dog so interesting subject so anyway there's a little flavor of a couple of the videos that are going up um i've got plenty of other ideas some of my ideas are admittedly a bit uh sort of they're all over the place a bit because I've got this sort of wild opportunity, <laughs> extended opportunity even to think about the sort of content I'm putting out. Um, and, you know, I guess like any creator, they try to put out content that appeals to them. And so yet also is useful for people. So again, another sort of balance to take into account. So I'll quit whilst I'm ahead. Uh, I won't I won't keep going until I've got zero viewers, but I thank you once again for watching. 
Um, please feel free to leave any thumbs up and comments or anything of that nature post uh, video if you're watching it on replay. Thanks for that. And um, I will, I think, schedule in some of these so you'll get more prior warning and that we can have a, a more in-depth chat together. OK, so until then, look after yourself, folks. Keep your chin up. Don't let the situation uh, weigh you down. Just keep going. Take it one day and one step at a time and look after yourselves. OK, until next time. Bye for now.